Hello there, happy new year, and welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 312, our first live stream of 2024. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia tonight. Tonight is Wednesday, January 3rd, 2024, and tonight is a live stream sharing a couple of sneak peeks from the upcoming January to April 2024 mini catalog, as well as a designer series paper that can be earned for free during celebration. I want to give a special shout out to my brother Bubba G. I see that he's in the chat tonight. Hey, Gregors. <laughs> um, I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday season. I cannot believe it's 2024. The kids went back to school today after how many days home? They've been home since December 15th, so it was a little quiet around here today, just Brian and I. Anyways, we had a good winter break. We went and saw Wonka. We went to visit family in South Carolina. The dog Kona came with us. Um, what else did we do? We went out to dinner as a family to get some sushi. Anyways, we had a good break. I can't say it was restful, but it was a good break. So if you're watching us live as you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. And I want to give a special hello to my Pixie patrons, my YouTube channel members. You'll notice them in the chat with a little magic wand icon next to their name. The different colors indicate how long they've been a member of the channel. We're so grateful to have their membership and their support of the channel. If you do want to join the Pixie patrons, uh, there is a join button right next to the subscribe button. And sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not, depending on which device you're using. But you can always go to the paperpixie.com slash patron to get to that channel membership page. We, I do a members only live stream once a month on the third Thursday of the month with some special card templates, layout templates, etc. So a couple of housekeeping items. If you've got questions for me during the live stream, put a cue in front of that question. Otherwise, it's just a comment. I do ask that you save the cue for questions only. Um, that way I can make sure to answer everybody's questions. And let's see, I will save your questions till the end of tonight's live stream um, so that I can focus on tonight's project and then answer the Q&A. <clears throat> at the end and I'll stay on until I'm done with that. When you shop with me, you earn Pixie perks on orders of $25 or more. All you need to do to shop with me is to use my magic shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto magically add my current host code to your order as well as ensure that you're shopping with me. If your order is $150 or more, make sure you take that host code off because you're actually gonna earn um, Stampin' Rewards from Stampin' Up, but you'll also earn Pixie Perks from me as well. We've got a brand new catalog dropping tomorrow. Again, that's the January to April 2024 mini catalog that drops at when the clock strikes midnight mountain time. Um, usually ordering may, t or the website may take a couple hours to set up, but you can t take a look around midnight mountain time to see if the new catalog products are loaded. It is also the start of celebration, which is my favorite time of the Stampin' Up! year. From January 4th through February 29th, celebration is an opportunity to earn extra free products through a number of different ways. One is with purchases of $50 or $100. There's two different levels of free products to choose with those order increments. There's also, if you place a really big order of $300 or more, you get an additional $30 in Stampin' Rewards to spend. And then the starter kit is always an amazing deal during celebration. We've got two options, although I have a feeling one option is gonna be much more interesting than the other. I don't have it at my fingertips right now, but you can purchase the $99 starter kit. You get to choose up to $125 in product of your choice. Plus, you either get to choose $30 in additional products, so that'd be $155 in product for $99, or you can get the special Stampin' Glass Mat Studio, which is a $60 value, and it's our tempered glass mat. Also comes with a cleaning chamois and a silicone mat as well. So $60 value, that would be the one that I would choose. Um, that is, again, January 4th through February 29th. So we'll be talking about that over the next few weeks as well. Today is the last day to grab any products that are retiring. So if there were still a few items from the outgoing mini catalog that you didn't quite put your hands on yet, 
Today is the last day to, to purchase those. That ends at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time tonight. Now, I did close my product shares sign up. I do have a couple of invoices that haven't been paid yet. So if you missed out and you really wanna get in on product shares, shoot me an email as soon as possible tonight. I'm placing that order at 2 a.m. Mountain Time. No. 2 a.m. Eastern time, I'm gonna get up and put an order in, but if there's a few of you that really missed out but really wanna participate, shoot me an email, support at thepaperpixie.com. I'll keep an eye on my inbox, that's just for tonight. So it'd have to be a really quick turnaround, all right? So I have got this box for you tonight. I don't have show and tell from the kids because they didn't do any artwork over the holiday break, did they? <laughs> Um, so we are doing, this is a remake of a project that I shared in November of 2020. So three plus years ago, it's a diagonal closure gift box. Now the version that I shared in 2020 was actually a ornament box. And I had mentioned in that blog post, which you might be able to pull up the blog post link, Brian, I will also make sure to add the link to the older blog post to the chat so you have, or to the description of the video so you can go back and reference it. That one was a one and three quarter inch square box. This one is a two inch square box. So you can see the difference just by adding a little bit extra ribbon to hang it from. It could be a really cute ornament. I wanted to do a little Valentine's project for you tonight. Um, I only just got back to working today, so I figured this out. <laughs> In the afternoon if you're on if you're on my customer email list I mentioned to you that that's the one yep I mentioned to you that I hadn't quite figured out what I was doing for my live stream so this happened at the last minute but my blog is full of inspiration and sometimes I go there for my own inspiration so this is the project we're going to create tonight this version the only difference, well, there's two differences. One is the size, and then the other is the fact that I'm only using designer series paper for the base. So in the project sheet, which believe it or not, my 2024 resolution is to have project sheets for you when I go live, the project sheet is linked in the description. And I also included the designer series paper measurements if you wanted to have the base of this be cardstock and then add designer series paper panels instead. So I did include those additional measurements as an alternative. <clears throat> so let's just jump right in and create this. I've just got the one project for you tonight as I'm easing into 2024 here, but I think you'll love it. And inside I will show you um, when I create the other project, I'll open this one and show you what's inside. I've got the Bath & Body Works lip scrub, which I think they still sell. Um, that's in the box but you could also fit a handful of Hershey's Nuggets, Hershey's Kisses, all kinds of treats. I'm pretty sure an EOS lip balm will definitely fit in here because it's two inches by two inches by two inches. So um, there we go. Brian's got that link in the chat for you um, if you're interested in looking at the alternative version, but I'll also add it to the description for those of you watching on replay. So we are going to start with a piece of designer series paper that measures six by nine and a half. And this comes from, this is the designer series paper that you'll be able to choose for free with a $50 purchase during celebration. So this is the kind of the front and the back. It is a beautiful specialty paper. Um, it's called the Most Adored Specialty Designer Series Paper. So it's a full pack that you get free with a $50 purchase. This is a $16.50 value you'll get for free. You get 12, um, 12 pieces. It's two each of six double-sided designs. So one side has the gold foil and the other side has the beautiful either flirty flamingo or real red um, colorways there. So again, six by nine and a half. And I have cut this to portrait. Now this paper is just slightly directional. You can see that the hearts are going this way. Um, so if you do have a directional pattern, you're gonna wanna cut the piece to a portrait layout. All right, so let me bring in the Simply Scored. You all are so sweet, thank you. All right, so Simply Scored. Along the six inch side, I'm gonna go ahead and score this at two inches and four inches. 
Now, it doesn't matter which orientation the pattern is in for the scoring because the, basically the scoring is the same top to bottom, kind of left to right. So on the short side, it's two and four. And then on the long side, we're gonna do, I'm actually gonna flip for the first score line because this paper is gonna go in a, am I doing that the right way? Hold on, um, I'm thinking here. Yeah, I'm gonna flip. So the first score line on the long side is three quarters. It's just because of the orientation of the box, this fold goes in a different direction than the rest of them. So I do like to score on the other side and then I'll flip it back for the next few score lines. So that was first at three quarters, then we're gonna do every two inches after that. So two and three quarters, four and three quarters, six and three quarters, and then I'm gonna flip it again and do the last score line at eight and three quarters. So again, all these measurements are in the project sheet linked in the description. I'm gonna repeat them quickly one more time. Short side, two and four. Long side, I flipped and did three quarters. Flipped back and did two and three quarters, four and three quarters, six and three quarters. Flipped again, eight and three quarters, okay? I'm gonna bring in the template here. Now, we are gonna do a little bit of diagonal scoring. This template looks crazy because we are gonna cut away some pieces, but we wanna go ahead and do these diagonal score lines that are basically just dividing these four squares in half, all right? So, you're gonna basically come in the three quarter inch, skipping the two inch, and come into this these two squares that are in the center here. I turn the angle here, it's these two squares. We're gonna go ahead and do um, some scoring. Now I'm gonna use the take your pick tool, scoring tool. And when you get the take your pick tool, you get two different ends that come with it. Well, it's three different ends if you count the putty end. And then you've got a double-ended stylus tip with a larger ball tip and a smaller ball tip. I always like to use the smaller one, but if you're having trouble with your uh, specialty paper breaking or cracking on you, you can try using the bigger ball tip. And then it also comes with a little spatula piece and the pokey tool end or the piercing end. So I've got um, the ball tip end on there and I'm gonna bring in my ruler, which you can tell I was creating on the fly because now I can't find my ruler. Oh, here it is. It's hiding in a catalog. All right, so I'm gonna show you on the template really quickly. I'm gonna basically go from the corner, like from corner to corner, but you wanna start here in sort of the center score line and go out, kind of radiate out and up versus you don't wanna go this way, you only wanna go this way. So what I like to do when I do diagonal score lines, I'll probably put that up there so you can still kind of see it. I'm gonna go ahead and I like to place my stylus right where I wanna start. I put that down first, and then I bring my ruler up to the stylus, and then I'm gonna diagonally score. I know that's right up to the top of the screen there, but corner to corner. So um, because I've got all these video lights, sometimes it's hard for me to see. I'm just gonna place the stylus at both ends just to make sure that ruler is lined up, and then you get that first diagonal score line there, okay? So again, radiating out, I'm gonna come in and do the opposite side here. Oops, there we go. So then we're kind of creating that V shape, I'm trying to catch the light there so you can see it, eh, just barely, okay? Then I'm gonna turn it 180, we're gonna do the same thing, opposite squares on the other side. I can see my score lines here, there we go. It's always easier to see um, when you're in person than on camera. So like that, okay? So let me go ahead and put the ruler away, leave the template out. But the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and fold and burnish on the score lines. I'm skipping the diagonal score lines for now. Now remember we 
uh, scored on the back side for these three quarter inch ones. So those are gonna fold backwards. Basically, those are gonna be valley folds. And then we'll burnish. I typically do the folds that go in the opposite direction first. Okay, so we've got those two that were valley folds and then the rest of them are gonna be mountain folds. I'm really excited about Celebration this year for a number of reasons, one of which a lot of the products are consumables and you know we all love paper. So paper is always something that I love to pick for a free gift. There's lots of papers to choose from. I think there's five different papers. There's stamp sets. There's a stamp set and embossing folder bundle, ribbon, an embellishment pack. So lots of great stuff. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is fold on, now that I've folded and burnished on all the sort of non-diagonal score lines, now we're gonna focus on the diagonal ones. So I've got my diagonal right there and I like to kind of pinch on that center score line. Basically, I'm wanting to fold these in. I guess I'm not really pinching on that score line. I'm folding these backwards. And then I like to just see how they're kind of, that is just kind of tucked in almost reminds me of like a paper air, paper airplane <laughs> style there, but that's folding in right there on those diagonal score lines. And I just found it's easiest to fold and burnish when I can just press this flat. We'll do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm just pinching on the diagonal score lines and that will naturally want to fold in. So now it's kind of looking like so. This is ultimately gonna be the direction of those diagonal folds. They're gonna be mountain folds. And then this piece right here, which we're gonna trim, is gonna be a valley fold, okay? So if I open this up, this is what we're working on right here, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna pop these out. So again, we're just folded in, but I'm gonna pop them out so that it makes it really easy to trim. So folded like so, you can see that diagonal score line. We're gonna trim away this bulk and I'm trimming about, I guess I'm leaving about three eighths of an inch behind. So with a pair of scissors, I'm literally just, and I'm gonna cut it and show you up close before we do the next one. Got two chances here to show you. I just removed that corner, but see there's about a three eighths of an inch left. So when I open this, we did both of those cuts at the same time. Okay, and that removes the bulk of this. And I'll show you when the, when the box closes, you're gonna have all of this bulk of this folding to the inside of the box. So by removing it, and you'll see it better when we close the box, there's not as much bulk going into the box, which leaves a lot more space for treats or a little gift, all right? So coming back to the opposite side, again, I'm gonna just pop that out for now. And because I'm right-handed, I just find that it's easiest to have this here on the right side. I'm trying to catch the light there so you can see that diagonal score line there. Since this is folded in half, when we cut it, we're cutting through both sides. So again, coming about three eighths of an inch away from the score line. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just really need a little bit to then fold into the box. All right, so it's not quite looking like the finished product yet. We've got a couple, a little bit more surgery to do to the cardstock. So you could save these for a project if you wanted to. I tend to not save things like that. And then if I turn the template this way and I've got my paper in portrait orientation, I actually like to cut it on the back side because I can see it better. I'm gonna cut up the vertical score lines and stop at the second horizontal score line. Um, just going straight up the center of that score line. So go to the second horizontal and stop. Like so. So we've basically released those three sections. I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side cutting up the vertical score line, stopping at the second horizontal. Like so. 
All right, so we do need to trim a little bit away. I, for me, it's easiest to use my paper trimmer, but you could absolutely eyeball it. Essentially what we're doing is removing that three quarters of an inch section, and then I'm leaving behind a half of an inch on this section. So again, you could eyeball it and just trim right there, but I love to make things quick and efficient. So just gonna bring in the paper trimmer. And the most important thing is you have this in landscape orientation and you fold that middle section out of the way. Okay, so it looks like that. Kind of looks like a frog if you hold it this way. <laughs> All right, so this folded line here where we folded that, sec that section out of the way, I'm gonna line up that at the half inch marker on the paper trimmer, which is the second score line to the right, sorry, to the left of the cutting groove. So I'm just going to tuck those feet under there and I'm lining up that fold line right there at the second vertical line. And then I'm just gonna trim. So those pieces get removed. You might be able to save these for a little punch out or a piece on a project if you wanna save those. And what you're left behind is you've got these little half inch tabs. So we're gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side. Fold that middle section out of the way. Tuck those feet under there because they totally look like feet to me. And line up that folded edge there at that second vertical score line to the left of the cutting groove. That's the half inch mark. And what that ensures is it's basically leaving behind a half inch tab here, okay? So then our piece looks like that, okay? A little bit more work to do on this. So the next thing I'm gonna do is again, fold that section out of the way to kind of isolate these tabs and then we're just gonna come in and I'll do it from the back side because it's just easier. Miter cut those tabs. like so, and then I'll repeat the same thing on the opposite side. Get those out of the way. And then you wanna bring in a corner rounder punch. I'm using my trusty retired detailed trio, but I know y'all have a corner rounder punch in your stash. Just gonna round the corners of these two tabs that are sticking out. I flipped the paper instead of moving the punch around. And so now our piece looks like so. Okay, kind of crazy what you can do with paper, right? All right, so the last thing we're gonna do before we start using glue is I'm gonna grab a hole punch and I just have an eighth of an inch hole punch. I think most of the standard ones are an eighth of an inch. And I like to just do this all at once. So I'm kind of folding this in half to line up those two rounded edge sections, just making sure it's all lined up. And then I'm gonna punch two holes for a bow to go through. And I'm just kind of eyeballing so that they're equidistant between the edge and the score line and from each other. They also don't have to be perfect because the ribbon's gonna hide that cattywampus, but it's handmade, right? <laughs> so there we go. We've got those pieces. You can see a little bit better from the back side. okay? Now this piece is ready to go for adhesive. So where's my liquid glue? I'm gonna just start with one tab at a time, and essentially I'm gonna line up this score line with this cut edge, and that's gonna to start to form the box corner. And this box is gonna look really weird once we're done putting the, gluing the tabs together, but it's so cool how it goes together. So liquid glue, again, lining up that score line with that cut edge. And take your time here, you can absolutely use a tape runner or tear and tape for this if you prefer. I love the liquid glue because it gives you time to get things right where you want it. And here in Georgia with humidity, the liquid glue just hang, holds, holds a little bit better than the tape runners. All right, so we're just gonna work our way around the remaining tabs. Okay. 
And again, just lining up that score line with the cut edge to form that really nice box corner there. And I've just kind of got one finger inside and one finger outside and just pressing together. Oops, that's not a tab. <laughs> I almost put glue in the wrong spot. And then this guy. And finally, the last tab here. So yeah, it looks really strange, right? But when you fold the two sides together, you magically have this super cool box, okay? So let me go ahead and open this one and show you This is the size of the Bath and Body Works Exfoliating Lip Scrub. It is, this, I've had this for a long time, so I'm hoping that they still carry it. It's a half of an ounce, but the um, diameter of it is one and three quarters, okay? And you'll notice that it's gonna push out those tabs just a little bit. Let's see if I can catch that in the light. But the way that the box works is those actually, you wouldn't even realize that those tabs are pushed out a little bit, that will fit. Now, this box is sturdy enough to hold the exfoliating lip balm, but again, on the project sheet I've got, um, if you'd prefer to do cardstock for the base for it to be a little bit sturdier, I've included the measurements for the designer series paper panels that you could add. Okay, so that's what I've put in there. Uh, I'm gonna grab a couple more things just to show you and then we'll go ahead and decorate the box. trying to see what else I have that would fit. Um, I know. I know Ferreros would fit in here and I'm trying to figure out if we can get a couple. I think just one will fit. Let's see. Yeah, only one. So it's a little bit roomy for one Ferrero. The uh, one and three quarter inch version might would be a better fit. The one that Brian added to the chat and I'll add to the description of the video after the stream. Um, I think that that's too wide. That's that um, C.O. Bigelow Rose Sav, too big. This is kind of a tiny version of a EOS lip balm, but that should fit in here as well. Again, it's a two inch, uh, two inch cube. Um, let's see what else we got going on here. These of course are <laughs> Christmas treats, but you could throw in a handful of cute Valentines. Hershey's Kisses would fit in there. And once the box closes because of those tabs, I don't know, I've got one, two, three, about nine to 10 of those Hershey's Kisses. Those fit in there just fine. Probably fit a few more. Um, Dove Promises will fit in there. My little stash of treats. So yeah, a lot of different things can fit in there. Hershey's Nuggets will fit in there. Um, I've got chocolate coins, those would fit too. So lots of options. Again, good size, two inch cube, okay? All right, so let's get to decorating then. Okay, I'll just put the little um, exfoliating lip scrub in there. And again, you'll see those tabs pop out just a little bit because of the size of the scrub but these tabs will compensate for that and it still closes really nicely on the side, okay? Um, and then you'll notice with the directional pattern, so on the back you'll see that the hearts are upside down, but on the front they're right side up. So just pay attention to that when you get ready to decorate this. I'm gonna use some Real Red ribbon and it comes from, it's a combo pack. It's Real Red and Burlap in the annual catalog. There's also a Real Red and Garden Green combo pack. You can grab the Real Red from there, but you could use a gold ribbon, um, twine, anything that you'd like to use for this. 
So I'm just gonna grab the real red here. I do recommend that you cut your ribbon at an angle that just makes it easy to feed through the hole punches. So I'm gonna go through the front on the right side and come back through the back on the left side. I like to tie my ribbon off the spool. Okay, so I'm gonna crisscross, bring the spool, this is how I do it, bring the spool over to the left and I'm gonna grab my reverse tweezers because I need that third hand. And then we'll tie a bow here. Just kind of get that where I want it and then my reverse tweezers will hold that in place for me like magic. My magic third hand and then we'll tie the bow. This would work with thin ribbon, wide ribbon, all kinds of ribbon for sure. So we're just gonna judge our little loop-de-loops here. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then I'll come in and trim the tails. And the ribbon is good to go, okay? It looks a little bit, it reminded me of a washing machine. <laughs> With the way that, does that look like a washing machine to you? I just see things when I paper craft. Frogs, washing machines, what else can we see tonight? <laughs> it's like we're looking for images in the clouds. All right, so I've done a couple of die cutting pieces ahead of time to save time, but I can't wait to show you the Adoring Hearts bundle and how it works. I can find all my pieces and parts. Oh, I put my die cutting machine way over there. Hold on one second. All right, so let's talk about the Adoring Hearts bundle. This, I believe, if I remember the price, it's $53, which means if you purchase the Adoring Hearts bundle, you can get the designer series paper I used tonight as your free gift. It all goes, coordinates together. So the Adoring Hearts bundle comes with the Adoring Hearts stamp set, which I love for um, anniversaries, Valentines, really, really pretty. And it also can come bundled with the, I think it's the Adoring Hearts hybrid embossing folder. And what a hybrid embossing folder is, is it's not just an embossing folder, but also a set of dies that coordinate. So the embossing folder itself, and I showed this briefly on my sneak peek live stream on the 22nd of December. Um, these work with the dies. So you can actually layer the die in the embossing folder and emboss and die cut at the same time. You wanna make sure you're always putting the dies cut side up on the logo side. So we're gonna go ahead and do a panel here, six by six, or I think I did like five and a half by five and three quarters. I just grabbed a scrap from my stash of real red cardstock. So just big enough to kind of cover those dies. But again, I think six by six is what these, yeah, if you do a six by six piece of cardstock, that will work as well. So we've got embossing folder, the logo side, the, the largest of the dies cut side up and you'll see that once it's laying in there, you can't even, it's not moving around. It perfectly nestle, nestles in there and then I'll put my cardstock over the top, okay? Then we'll go ahead and close the embossing folder. Now you can cut this either direction, this side facing up or this side facing down. I just found it was easier to kind of keep everything in place with the, the way I've got it laid out here. So let me grab the embossing machine or stamp and cut embossing machine. And this is a 3D embossing folder, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of a different sandwich. Hopefully I don't make anybody hungry tonight. <laughs> so we've got cutting plate one or base plate one. Then we're gonna go ahead and do the embossing folder, and I do like to do the spine going in first, okay? And then specialty plate number four. Where's the four? right underneath my thumb <laughs> that goes on the top. So that's gonna be the right thickness for going through the machine. 
Now I did find that one of the hearts didn't cut all the way through. Everybody's embossing machine is a little bit different as far as pressure and tolerance. I'm gonna just go back and forth a couple of times and we'll check it before we pull everything out. The noise is normal, but let's just double check before I put this away that they all popped out. Yep, so that one in the corner did not. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that, leaving it just as it is. And we'll do that one more time. I'm gonna flip, actually let's flip this the other way. So we've got it going the opposite direction. More than likely one of my, the rollers is not, doesn't provide as much pressure on one side of the machine. And that can happen over time. Oh geez, noisy. Go back through one more time. Now you're gonna get nine hearts from this pass through the machine and they're all gonna be embossed and cut, ready to go. All right, just checking, they're all cut and ready to go. So we'll pop out those beauties. All right, so get these out. They all have, some of them are duplicate patterns. You'll see there's also embossing on the background as well. And you don't have to use the die. You could just emboss an entire panel and have nine hearts that don't get die cut out. But look how adorable these are. These kind of remind me of cookie stamps just with the, the design that's on the heart. So we've got three of the same. I think it's three, is it three, three, and three? Probably. <laughs> so just looking at all of these, yeah. So, so cute. Yep, you get three of each pattern. So there's the leaves as well. So look at that, nine die cut and embossed hearts ready to add to Valentine's. I love that for mul making multiples. So um, in the die set as well, there is a banner die that I've already die cut, basic white. Let me grab that die so you can see it. So the trick for this one, this is not a hollow, meaning you can't see the sentiment through it. So I die cut it first, but because the stamp set is photopolymer, then we can just stamp right on the blank there, okay? And I also die cut using the stylus shapes and gold foil, this stitched circle die. We're gonna use that as a background, okay? All right, so the sentiment is just for you and it fits perfectly in the little banner. Got my brand new real red ink pad. All right, I'm gonna lean in here. There we go. So cute, I love that. And so easy, I love photopolymer. All right, now we can go ahead, let's pick the heart we're gonna use, let's see. I like that intricate design there. All right. Here's our box. I'm gonna go ahead and do liquid glue on the back side of the gold circle. And let me tell you, before I glue that down, the diameter on this one, if you're using different circle dies, is about an inch and five eighths. Place that right on the top. There we go. And then I'm gonna grab a trio of dimensionals, pop up the heart. And place that right over the circle there. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of our banner. You could pop this up on dimensionals too if you wanted to. 
And then we'll just place that right over the heart. I love that wavy banner there. And it needs one more thing, don't you think? <clears throat> So I was just looking at our different gold embellishments because gold kind of tickled my fancy for this project with the gold foil. So I'm just going to grab a brushed metallic dot and we'll pop that up on the upper left part of the heart. Just a little added bling there. I love using the putty end of this to pick up embellishments. So there we have our diagonal closure gift box. Again, inside is the Bath and Body Works lip scrub. It is one and three quarters inch in diameter. Again, this base is designer series paper, so it's not super it's sturdy, but it's not super strong like cardstock would be. So you've got options. And again, I've included both um, options on the project sheet. So a fun little Valentine's project for you as you get ready for Valentine's Day. Obviously this can be changed up for so many different occasions. This would be actually super cute with like a mini cupcake, although I think the sides might get in the frosting, but a mini cupcake would be cute inside this box. Or maybe a cute little, maybe they've got mini cupcake candles or something like that. A cute votive candle could be cute in here as well. So that's what I got for you tonight. Again, the project sheet is linked in the description. And as I get ready for tonight's Q&A, if you haven't already taken a moment, be sure to click the thumbs up button for us here in the video if you enjoyed tonight's project. And a quick reminder, if you've got questions for me, make sure to put a Q in front of that question. I've seen a lot of great questions come through in the chat, so I look forward to getting those answered for you. Let's see. All right, Q. <clears throat> Let's see, hold on, next screen. All right, Cynthia is up first. What is the paper that I got in the mailbox today? Let me know. If you're talking about the envelope you got for me, maybe, that was the Mary Bold and Bright Designer Series paper from the outgoing mini catalog. That was my team holiday gift. So I think that's what you're asking about. Ooh, this is a good question, Rita. Can you subscribe to the three-month paper pumpkin in the starter kit? I am... 99% sure you cannot um, with the starter kit. Um, but my best advice is to try it, but I'm pretty sure the prepaid paper pumpkins are one of the few things that are excluded from the starter kit. And I think it's just <clears throat> because of the way sending the um, coupon code works for those. I don't think it's set up to work with the starter kit. Absolutely give it a try, but I'm pretty sure that's not possible. And it's possible somebody's already answered that in the chat. If there's another demonstrator that might know the answer to that. What does the oval punch look like? Hmm. Are you asking about the modern oval punch chain? The one that's in the mini catalog, I think. <clears throat> It's actually the same oval punch that was in, I'll turn it this way so you can see it, in the September to December mini catalog that's carrying over to the January to April mini catalog. So that's what it looks like, the modern oval punch. I love this punch so, so much. It coordinates with my favorite stamp set in the catalog, which I can't show you. Well, I could show you it, but I don't know where it is. I can't show you the catalog though, the inside of the catalog until tomorrow. Tomorrow it's fair game. <clears throat> Let's see, I would like to order the Thoughtful Moments hybrid embossing folder, but I don't have the big stamp and cut and emboss machine. Can this folder be used in other die cut machines? Yes and no, darling. It depends on the die cut machine. I'm not sure of, um, I know it will work in the Big Shot, so the Sizzix Big Shot, um, and they've got a specialty plate similar to our specialty plate. I think the Sizzix Big Shot specialty plate was the blue one, if I'm remembering correctly, when we used to carry the Big Shot. Um, I think with other machines, you just have to play around with the thickness. The machines are really good at telling you if it's too much pressure, meaning if, you're have, if, if you can't easily get it to move through the machine, stop, because that just means there's too much you're trying to feed into the machine. I always recommend you start with less in your sandwich and see if it's too easy and you're not getting any impression. Obviously, obviously that's not enough um, of a thickness for it to go through, but I know it can be used in others. You just have to kind of 
play around with um, the different shims and things to try to get it to work. But just take your time and then eventually you'll figure out the right, the right sandwich, okay? Let's see, okay, I think I answered that one. Ha <laughs> ha no, it does not hold a gift card to Sue. <laughs> uh, let's see, can we place a qualifying order in January and get a free gift and then place another qualifying order in February and get another free gift? Absolutely, you can place as many orders as you want during celebration and you'll qualify each time you hit the 50 or 100. So for example, let's say you place a $100 order and the, that dollar amount um, is before shipping and taxes. So it's basically your cart subtotal. Let's say your cart subtotal is 100. You have a couple of options. You could pick two um, $50 level celebration items or you could pick one $100 level. And then, for example, if you place a $300 order, not only are you going to get the extra 300, or the extra 300, <laughs> Brian's like, oh, <laughs> the extra 30 in Stampin' Rewards, you'll also kind of get a combination. You could do six $50 items. You could do $300 items, although I don't think we have, well, I think there's only $200 items, but you can also get, for example, let's say you earn two, um, $50 products, you could actually get two of the same paper if you wanted to. Does that make sense? So there's lots of different options. It's kind of every combination in between. You could place multiple orders in January and earn multiple free gifts. So um, there's no limitation to that, which is part of what I love about Celebration. Lynn, that is a great question. I actually, when I first studied it, and I want to say it was Britta, Tim, and um, let's see... Sam Poodles, she also did a really tiny one. So I kind of did a hybrid between Britta's and Sam's. Um, I linked to both of those projects in the original blog post. And then um, once I kind of figured out how the box went together, then it was pretty easy for me to kind of figure out the, the measurements. But it's such a cool, I just love the way that it's like this clamshell closure. Um, it's just amazing how it's one shape open and another shape closed. So I've got a couple other, um, there's another one that's a longer version of it, but it has the same diagonal closure on the sides. And that one had, um, a tube of hot chocolate powder and then a peppermint spoon. I think that was another Christmas project. So I do love the style of box. So Cindy, you can place orders starting at midnight mountain time, assuming the website refresh happens. Um, historically, the last several um, catalog launches, stuff's been ready to go right at midnight mountain time. So if you're up at midnight mountain time, I'll be going to bed for a couple of hours and then I'll be getting up at two Eastern, which is midnight mountain time, and then I'll go back to bed. <laughs> so yeah, midnight mountain time. Oh, good question, Nicole. So the box itself, it's called Lock and Lock. I believe I got it at the container store here in the US. I don't think you'll be able to see that, but um, right here it says Lock and Lock. Um, but I did find that at the container store, there's actually four compartments in there that you can take out and move around. So it can be, um, see if you can see that, see the four different compartments there. Um, you can take out and not use, and then you got a bigger space, but um, actually it's two, it's two compartments, but there's two compartments each, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I found that one at the container store. Will it hold the hand, yeah, I, did I skip one? No, I got it. Okay, will it hold the hand sanitizer? I don't believe it will, but let me double check that, Susan. I always forget. I feel like the hand sanitizer is taller than two inches. Yeah, the hand sanitizer is just too tall. So if I put it upright, you can see it's taller than two inches. And then even at an angle, it still won't. It's still too, too hard to fit in there. Sorry, I know it's focusing on my face right now. But yeah, unfortunately, that's too tiny or the box is too tiny for the hand sanitizer.
I think I answered this, um, Patty, but yes, it does include that banner piece that we used for the decoration on the box. What are your designated pairs of scissors, paper, ribbon, etc.? Well, pretty sure my, <laughs> my paper snips, which I only use for paper, sometimes they get used for other things. I think one of the kids, it looked like there was frosting on my paper snips. <laughs> I have no idea what the kids would have been cutting with it, but typically my, I was like sniffing my paper snips because it smelled like frosting. Um, paper snips for paper. I have this pair from an amazing customer of mine, Kate. Um, these are the Fiskars Titanium Non-Stick. I try to remember to use these for sticky stuff. Like if I'm going to be cutting maybe something that I've already used adhesive on or I'm using the Velcro dots and I want to cut them in half. So those will, um, the adhesive doesn't stick to those. And then I do have ribbon scissors, the old Stampin' Up! ribbon scissors um, that really we only use for ribbon shares. They come out occasionally throughout the year, but usually it's just Brian using them to cut the ribbon for ribbon shares. They d I do have designated purposes, but I don't think you can see that, but there's some, no, you can't see that. There's gunk on my paper snips. I need to clean them. <laughs> I didn't do really any crafting this holiday break, but hopefully that helps you. Great question, Francis. So the Stampin' Glass Mat Studio will eventually be available for sale after celebration. So celebration is going to go through February 29th. And then Stampin' Up! has said that the Stampin' Glass Mat Studio, a limited quanti quantity of them will be available for purchase. They haven't given us a specific date, but I'm guessing it'll be sometime in March. So I'll keep you all posted on when that's available to purchase. Um, if you're not interested in um, purchasing a starter kit and earning it for free, it will be available for purchase at some point after celebration. The retail price on that will be $60. So demonstrators were able to purchase it um, for a, a short period of time during the pre-order once they reached the, um, there was a threshold that Stampin' Up! had set to make sure that there was enough available for those wanting to join during celebration. So they reached that threshold and now both demonstrators and customers will need to wait um, to purchase it sometime after celebration. So stay tuned for that. Yes, one does get to choose the free gift that comes with the I Want It All package. Again, this will be a first come, first served. I'll check my email after the live stream. Um, I don't, the sign up is closed, so I'll fill out the sign up for you. But yes, you do get to pick a gift or you get to pick a surprise me. I think I only have one of the I Want It All available. Oh, Donna, you might have gotten the, that sounds like the Canadian prices. Um, it should be 50 or 100. So anywhere you see in your catalog 60 or 120, change that to 50 or 100, or just make a mental note of that. The item numbers should still be the same, but yeah, it sounds like you might've gotten a European catalog. Um, Canadian. European, yeah, Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not, well, I, yeah, I've got me thrown off. So she's not in Canada? No, she's not, in the, she's here in the US. All right, the glass mat, um, is not magnetic M. It is just tempered glass. There's no magnet behind it, but stay tuned. I will be revealing a glass mat on my workspace when I can get my setup reconfigured. That one is magnetic, but the Stampin' Up! one is not. Okay. Yes, I'm pretty sure it's tempered glass, Mary. Um, hold on. Let me see if I can double check that. Heavy duty safety tempered glass crafting mat with raised non-slip rubber feet features a white background printed with a gray grid heat and scratch resistant wipes clean with water or alcohol. So yeah, it's a really cool, there's cool things you can do with it. Heat embossing, um, you use your take your pick tool on it. You can put ink on it. You can make a mess and it cleans up really easily. So, um, it's really great. And I want to say the measurements on it are. 17 by 14. So it's a really good size. <clears throat> Alrighty, we have reached the end of the questions. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. 
As always, all you need are stamps, ink, and a little paper pixie. I'm so grateful that you joined me tonight. Hello to those of you, and thank you to those of you that watched the replay. Thank you so much to my channel members for your support. You'll get a little shout out here in the outgoing credits. Again, today's the last day to grab any last chance products. But starting at midnight mountain time, the January to April 2024 mini catalog will be live in the online store and celebration starts. So purchases of $50 or more earn free product. Great starter kit promotion if you want to get your hands on the Stampin' Glass Mat Studio for free. I'd love to have you join my team of Paper Pixies. And if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always happy to answer your questions. So again... I'll check my inbox if anybody's interested in a few last minute spots in the product shares. I'm um, placing that order first thing in the morning and then Brian and I will get to work. So thanks again for joining me. I will see you next Wednesday for episode 313. Wow, that's crazy to say. That will be on Wednesday, January 10th, 2024. Happy New Year. Thanks for joining me. Here's a quick shout out to my channel members. Thanks again and I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.